press this to on and as soon as you see this and now it says the unit is on unit is paused why is saying that because the desired temperature is 71 and the actual temperature is 71 so if I change that so the unit is paused is going to go into unit is on so let's do that so I'm going to go ahead and uh, since it's on heat so I'm going to increase the temperature 72 and now you can see it says unit is on and heat is on hey what's up Nasir Malik here welcome to another IoT tutorial in this tutorial we're going to be building thermostat UI so you can go ahead and download and install Niction editor as I showed you in uh, one of my previous videos I will have the link in the description below once you launch the application you will be starting from this UI so you'll go file uh, new I'm just going to give it a name so I'm going to go ahead and call it a uh, smart thermostat and I'm going to save it once I do that it's gonna pop up another screen so there's enhanced versions and there's basic version I'm using basic version so I'm basically gonna select appropriate display so on my display um, the one I'm using uh, is the this one right here 3.2 uh, uh, inches that has a resolution of 240 by 400 so I'm going to select this and the basic is already selected so next what I will do is select the uh, uh, display orientation so right now it's vertical and I don't want that I want horizontal so I'm going to select this and then after that I'll just click OK and it creates this display so now what we're going to do is I have included a couple of images on the github and so once you download your uh, project from github you're going to see these two images and one image with the on state all the icons with on state and whatever you need in that image and then one you want with all the buttons and everything in off state or different values or statuses so to explain it in easy way is that I have buttons and buttons have two states in, in this case so I have an um, uh, image what it looks like when it's on status and then what it looks like when it's an off status. Same thing here for cool and heat and also for Fahrenheit and centigrade. And these are the two buttons. So once they're pressed, they get highlighted and, um, and the white color and otherwise they're grayed out. And then over here you see a heat um, word with the symbol fire and an AC with the softnik. So these are two simple PNG images. That's all you need to create this UI. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and import those two images and start building our interaction. So I'm going to click this plus sign add. And I'm going to select first image which is panel zero. I'm going to import this and uh, it says import successfully. And I said OK. Then I'm going to go ahead and do the second one and this is successful so for the UI you already see this page one right here and this is what page one is and it has an ID here and if you look at the properties uh, pane right here uh, it says solid color and I'm going to change this to image and then here you have a property PIC which is picture so I it needs to have a, when you change it to image you need to tell it which image to use so you double click it so you double click this and it's gonna pop up these two images that you already uh, imported so we're going to go ahead and select this image 0 right here so you can see uh, this image is now placed in the background and uh, you can see it says 0 here so this 0 correspond to this image 0 this is imported first so that's why I imported it one by one because if you imported them together so uh, the, the naming of the indexes for zero or one will be different images so I wanted this to be as a background so that's why I uh, imported it first so now what you need to do is go ahead and start mapping these uh, for the buttons and how uh, we create interaction so uh, you see a toolbar on your left hand side and this toolbar will help you to build your interaction so we're going to go ahead and uh, first map these two buttons right here so for this because we set the state to on or off 
it's not a push button like you press it and then it goes back to this original state so this is a dual state button so we're gonna go ahead and click on the dual state and it's gonna drop this little square with the BT0 so we're going to go ahead and drag this on the top of this image and we're gonna resize it so make sure it covers most of the image or a little bit more than the image so once you press it that means this area will be activated when you press it on the screen so it, it, so having it a little bit big it's fine so once we place this button and resize it and the, uh, you see the properties on the right hand side yeah, we're gonna be updating these in a bit uh, but I want to show you so every time you place uh, something here uh, button stuff you want to test it you always go up here in the debug and you go ahead and click it and uh, right now what it's saying is that the page zero error bt0 font input invalid invalid font id so basically what it's asking is that there's an error in here it's missing some resource or something and it's clearly saying it needs a font so we haven't created any fonts we're going to go ahead create one just to get uh, going with this so we're gonna go into the uh, tools font generator so give it a uh, create whatever font you want and give it a name I will call it a test font and you can select the um, type of font you need and the size and once you select it uh, it kind of approximate tells you what the size is uh, but you probably have to play around with the fonts how they look on the screen and what size you need uh, based on the image and uh, your um, component size so I would just say uh, go ahead and generate this font it will ask me uh, where I want to place this font so I'm gonna go ahead and go and put it in into um, my github um, project that I downloaded part one fonts and I'm gonna put that there and I'm gonna say test font and I'll save it and I'll say yes add it and I'm done and you can go ahead and keep adding the fonts if you need but I'm done with this one so if you go in here you'll see this font has been added so now uh, if you see this error right here it's complaining about for the page zero and it doesn't have any font even though we're not using any uh, text in there it's still asking for it so we're gonna go ahead and make sure the page zero is selected if you have multiple pages and the font zero is already there um, so this is the font zero these are the numbers you need to put it in and now if I save it and if I uh, debug it it will go ahead and launch this debugger so, so this is really cool uh, utility I'm sorry so the text is there I mean uh, this is what it looks like so we don't want to uh, uh, use this button looks like this we want to display an image instead of having this grayed out with the text so this is what we need to do so we go ahead and first of all we're gonna go ahead and remove the text from here empty it out and click on the side so now you see there's no text in this button so you will go in here and then change this STA uh, parameter right here or value to crop image so once uh, you select this uh, what it's going to do is instead of having this color um, it's going to show you the images you're going to select so for that what we're going to do is we're going to select the images for PICC 0 and PICC one and I double click here I'll select this first image for the zero state and then the second image for the second state and you don't see any difference in here and go ahead and save it but what you do is when you go to debug click it and now you see this interaction uh, test window you could go ahead and click the button and you see that it changes but the issue with this is right now you don't see anything in the interaction area where it's sending the messages to your MCU or like Arduino or Vimo. So you need to know when the button is pressed. So for that, if you go back, 
So click on the button. So you have two options, a touchscreen press event. If you want to send a, a event from the touchscreen to the, your microcontroller on the press event, or you want to send it when the touch is released. So in this case, I want to do is uh, send the event when the touch is released and I save it and then run the debug. And now if you see, if I click on it, so this event, once it's con connected to the MCU, a microcontroller, these events will be going to the uh, MCU to tell it that uh, what buttons were uh, was pressed on the touch screen. So I went ahead and I added a, s a similar button for the heat. And if we debug it, you can see both of them uh, interacting and sending messages. And you can see the message has the ID in there, which button was uh, pressed. And we use this to differentiate between the events for the different uh, objects on the screen. So the next what I want to do is on this, uh, I, when I click the cooler heat, I want this image and the word to change. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a uh, object crop right here and I'm going to go ahead and size it in the manner that it covers the both images. So this shows that it is uh, covered and a little bit expanded in case if the snowflake is bigger than this. And uh, okay, so that's, so if I run this, uh, it's not going to do anything. Uh, so of course it needs a uh, um, picture value. So we're going to go ahead and use the default picture in the background picture. So that's good. So if I debug it and run it, if I click the heat and cool, it doesn't do anything in here because it's just using the same image. So what we need to do is in this, uh, we need to based on the action in here, we need to make sure that this image gets changed whatever is selected here. If it's a heat here, I want to see heat. If it is AC, I want to see the snowflake in, um, I want to see cool uh, written in here with the snowflake. So uh, this event is being sent when this button is pressed. So what we're going to do is we're going to write a code in here that changes this image so what basically I'm doing it's very simple uh, you can play around with it basically what it's saying if the uh, the queue the crop area image is zero that means a zero image is selected part of this cropped image zero is selected then if I'm clicked I want you to do this and what is that it's q1 dot PICC equal one. So basically, change the image to one. Change the image to this. Else, if I'm already selected this one right here, and I'm click, then change the image to heat. So that's what it does. So we'll do the same thing here, and we'll go Q1 dot PICC equal zero. So then display the image of this if I'm clicked. So uh, pretty simple and easy. So we're gonna go ahead and save it and test it out. Yeah, you saw that um, this this thing is not a full like ID kind of thing. So you, it's a little bit finicky how it, I mean, there's no difference. I mean, I just had uh, curly braces on the same line uh, and uh, it's just complaining about it. So I moved it to the next line and it's fine. So I'll just go ahead debug and now it's on heat and you see the heat image so if I click it it's just cool and I see AC image so if I click it again then it shows a different so this will keep changing like this so next what I want to do is uh, put in the current temperature in here so for that we're going to use a text uh, object and we're going to size it because we want this to be big and just move it a little bit on the side because I want we're going to put another uh, crop image here so it doesn't overlap with that so go ahead uh, actually the button over here we're going to put so this is text and we're going to 
change this to instead of solid color we're going to change it to crop image so it shows the background yeah right there so i would put 71 and you see the font is pretty uh, small in here and the color is uh, black for the font so i'm going to change to white color So now what we need to do is we need to import one of the fonts that is bigger in the size that I'm using. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So let's import all the fonts first. So if you go to the GitHub project that you downloaded, you should see in part one fonts and we're going to go ahead and insert them in this sequence. So these are the numbers that you need to put in into the images to show different fonts. So this one is using number three, Robot 96 right here. So if I go in here, click, and then I in the font, I say three and change it you can see it's pretty big and uh, instead of new text I should say 71 in here I changed it I'm not sure what happened it didn't change now uh, we need to resize a little bit so the whole thing shows up uh, so we need to make sure that yeah almost uh, so if I say 70 we need to make sure that different size of uh, text is going to fit so I would this is the maximum size so I need to make sure that this the whole thing fits this uh, uh, text object is a placeholder and uh, um, I added a uh, uh, value in there for the text to just show it so where it is and also to position it but once uh, it gets uh, the values from the MCU uh, it will show you the values that are coming from the MCU, not the ones you typed in hard-coded here. So next what we want to do is we want to change this. Uh, when I press it on the screen, uh, I want to change this from uh, Celsius to Fahrenheit, Fahrenheit to Celsius. So for this also we're going to use the dual state button. So I'm going to go ahead and click there and I'm going to bring it to make sure that it covers the entire image it's a little bit finicky how you have to do this just make sure you don't overextend it because then by mistake if you click on other objects this will so we're gonna go ahead and take the same approach we're gonna remove the solid color to crop and just to make sure it it covers the whole image which is pretty close okay and then we'll go ahead and do the same thing we'll select the position 0 off state and then we'll do the position on state and go ahead and remove the text from here and save it and go ahead and test uh it's talking about pac error okay t is it what is it t zero okay you can just stack the picture for the background that's fine it will be fine because that's all we're doing so now if i click here you see how it changes but when I do that, I want it to change this desired temperature uh, scale also. So to do that, we'll go back. And we're going to drop in an object, crop. And we're going to go ahead and scale it to the size here. So it's covering the entire... Um, Okay, like this. 
just to be you know you need to play around with it and then get it done so now what we need to do is we need to use a code in there so when i click this if this is celsius it's in celsius i want the scale to change and change the also the set desired temperature uh, to uh, celsius and then if it is fahrenheit uh, this needs to reflect that also so to do that i'm going to click on the b2 and i'm going to come in i mean you don't have to use the touch release event you can actually use the touch press event also i mean it's your preference but i like to uh, use this because at least when i'm press pressing the uh, button and then uh, releasing it then at that point it sends the um, event to the mcu so i'm going to go ahead and do uh, send event on this one also and this will go to the mcu and then also it will tell the mcu hey i'm changing the scale to fahrenheit from celsius so go ahead and recalculate the current temperature and give it to me and also calculate the current temperature for the desire and then display it here so we need that so i'm going to take the uh this right here um in the uh, touch release event and put the code in here and say if and we put q0 dot picc same if the image or the picture is zero then we're going to do this else in my close curly braces else okay if i can type okay do this so if you look at this uh q0 uh it has the value picc and that takes a uh, image so in hit button uh on this excuse me dual state button it's saying is if the q0 dot picc equals zero basically what to do select it to one simple basically alternating the state and then if it is not if it's one then you go ahead and select set it to zero that's how simple it is and you can do that for almost all of the um, uh, objects in here and then we save it and then debug it and of course it's asking for the uh, base image so we're going to select the base image right here i'm going to save it debug it so okay i forgot to put the equal sign in here that's why i was throwing error okay go ahead and debug it and now if i go in here and i click and you can see here it changes the both images and it sends the message to the mcu and in return, MC will go ahead and change the scale of this, recalculate the current temperature here and here, and uh, um, put the correct values. Okay, so this is done. So next, what I want to do is uh, display the um, date and time in here. So for that, we're gonna go ahead and put a text object there. So I'm going to add a couple of text objects and you can scale them to your desired image size uh, probably if you're using a different image uh, uh, it's probably a little bit different so i'm gonna go ahead and try to fit um, both of them i'm gonna change this the name to t2 to match with what we have in sketch and uh, remove the text well we can put the text there so just to see visually uh, if it fits correctly or not so i'm going to go ahead and take the date and the format whatever i want to fit in here and make sure that it uh it's saying the maximum size of the text it's exceeding so i'm going to change it to 30 and then try it again and hopefully uh, this fits and we're going to remove from solid color to crop image and change the color to white um, right here and now we need to go ahead and select an appropriate font in here to make sure that we um, display it. this is very small so I'm gonna go ahead and use this robot 24 number 5 so I will put 5 in here 
and you can see it's uh, displaying now and we're gonna go ahead and drop one more uh, text image on the bottom here and I'm not gonna worry about scaling it right now because this is just a, a mock-up of the thing I want to do so here I will do is put in the uh, time and we'll change this to also from solid color to crop image change the color to white and select a different font and the font is the same one we used um, previously in this one and it's a little bit off uh, let me see if I can make this resize and move this up and uh, let's see right there so I'm gonna name this one to T3 I mean you can name whatever you want but I just because I have it already in my sketch so I don't want to um, try to figure out all the stuff for the name for the each object so I think we're done pretty much except we need to put one uh, the placeholder here another text so we're gonna go ahead and change the image for t2 t3 so the picture is a background picture which is zero for this one and also for this one and we're done save it debug it and make sure this works yep so this is working this is working this is working and rest so we're gonna go ahead and I think this is it I mean we're gonna go ahead and, and test it out so if you want to see how I upload this sketch uh, go ahead and watch one of my previous videos where I show how to connect it to the uh, USB to TTL converter and how I upload it I'm not gonna do it because it's already getting longer than I wanted to uh, make this video so uh, go ahead and do that and then uh, we'll come back and then uh, let's test it out upload the sketch to Vimos uh, I show you in here and uh, uh, we'll go ahead and test and see how it works so I wanted to show you this how to create the UI in, it, uh, in the Niction editor if you wanted to create your own but you don't have to do it for this project. I already have created it and uploaded it to GitHub. So you could go to File, Open, and uh, this uh, Smart Thermostat uh, project that you downloaded, Part 1. You just select this Smart Thermostat HMI file. When you open it, it's already set up for you. All the code and everything. All the uh, You just simply connect your uh, uh, touchscreen, Nixon touchscreen and you upload it uh, if you run it in debug make sure uh, it's uh, functioning you know it's changing all the stuff okay guys by the way uh, for this uh, tutorial I am using different version of the board support uh, for ESP8266 so go into tools and uh, board managers and I just want to show you because uh, it some of the older version of the board support won't work so just type in the ESP 8266 I'm using 2.6.3 for this tutorial so make sure you have this one uh, installed so as right now as you can see on the serial um, output is showing the uh, unit status uh, zero uh, AC mode 0 desired temperature 71 actual 71 uh, this is this is mock to test it uh, um, the temperature itself because I have not connected to the uh, I do have connected already uh, I'm, I'm gonna show you in the next video how to calibrate it but for this one for you guys to have your UI ready for the next tutorial I um, hard-coded the temperature in there just to show you to make sure that your code and the UI is working correctly so hi <clears throat> so if I clear out so right now just keep an eye on these two uh, in between these two lines how they're going to change and and give you the status of the uh, unit for the AC or the heating unit and based on that we're gonna 
be making uh, you know turning on um, the relay or whatever we're using uh, to turn on and off the fan and the furnace or the AC so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, uh, as you can see on the screen right here so it says off unit is off and it's on heating uh, let me make sure it is clear enough for you guys okay so now uh, keep an eye on the serial I'm gonna go ahead and press this to on and as soon as you see this and now it says the unit is on unit is paused why is saying that because the desired temperature is 71 and the actual temperature is 71 so if I change that so the unit is paused is going to go into unit is on so let's do that so I'm going to go ahead and uh, since it's on heat so I'm going to increase the temperature 72 and now you can see it says unit is on and heat is on so basically you know the unit is on and then heat just it kicked in the furnace and then it's gonna be running until the temperature reaches to a desired uh, temperature the current temperature so if I lower it to match the actual temperature 71 then you'll see the same thing unit is on and unit is paused uh, this is to debug and make sure that my logic is working and uh, same thing we're gonna go ahead and test for the uh, cooling so we'll just go ahead and put it on a cool so now it says unit is on unit is paused since the temperature is matching for the desired temperature and an actual temperature so if I lower it it's going to say you know same thing unit is on AC is on uh, this is a very simple test code. We need to uh, improve this and because if I go up and change this to 72 then you will see that it says unit is paused, unit is on. Uh, so uh, there may be a few bugs in here and there uh, but you can see it is displaying the correct uh, date and the time and it's grabbing it from the um, one of the uh, NTP servers and uh, uh, basically uh, you can set the interval how often you want to update this so probably for the date you want to do it uh, you know once a day and the time you have you can adjust it how often you want to do it uh, but this is a very basic setup so hopefully on the next video we'll figure out um, how to get the uh, our trimester uh, hooked up uh, which is I already have but I for this one for this sketch I don't so and then how to um, calibrate it and how to sh show the correct Fahrenheit and uh, uh, Celsius uh, scales in here and that will be the next tutorial so please do give me feedback and let me know uh, I am getting some feedback what are the some of the featured people like to see in this so we're gonna go slowly slowly build this i'm gonna explain it all the way through how are we doing everything and so you guys understand it and if you want to build different projects using this knowledge it should be easy enough for you guys to do it so until next time uh bye and thank you very much